Geothermal energy is garnering a lot of interest in Western Canada these days. And you can go to the Energy Media YouTube channel or Energy Student Resources portal and see the interviews that we've done about it. Well, today I'm gonna to be talking to Dr. Roman Shore, who is the new or head of the new Geothermal Energy Lab at the University of Calgary. So welcome to the interview, Roman. Oh, thank you for having me here today this afternoon. Well, look, uh, why don't you just give us an overview of what the uh, the new lab is all about? Oh, absolutely. So the Geothermal Energy Lab at the U of C is a new multidisciplinary um, consortium across multiple schools at U of C that has the goal of bringing researchers together to address the problems that industry and also governments have in deploying geothermal. So our vision is to enable geothermal anywhere, because like right today, you can hear about geothermal in hotspots. So let's say Iceland, California, et cetera, where you have that uh, thermal energy close to the Earth's surface. However, there's, en there's thermal energy everywhere on the planet. You just had to drill deep enough for it. But to access it, you have to access it economically. Um, so technology has to be developed, adapted from oil and gas, um, and then much push forward to that point where deep geothermal can become economic for geothermal for power. Plus, while you're doing it, you have to have that engagement from the community because any sound engineering project can always be stopped by, let's say, an interest group or stopped because it does not consider either the sustainability of the process or does not consider the community within which it's built. So the Geothermal Energy Lab uh, is going to try and bring together researchers from engineering, from sciences, from law, um, and potentially in the future from um, the arts and humanities to all work together to try and address the research questions that are both on the technical side, but plus also on that um, social license, social acceptance and sustainability sides so that we can go ahead and develop geothermal anywhere. I think that's a very, very interesting point you make about the need to uh, consider social license from the beginning, because of course, we know the debates that have been taking place around pipelines and other uh, oil and gas infrastructure about social license. So Absolutely. I think it's very interesting. Now, uh, what are some of the technical challenges that your lab will be addressing with industry and researchers? No, absolutely. So today, if we just look at where we are in accessing oil and gas reservoirs, we can get oil and gas out of rock that is quite impermeable, can be quite deep, and can be reasonably um, hot or high pressured. And by hot, I may, may mean the same, the 200 degrees C range. To, um, te te technically, though, we are not very good at drilling into hard rock. So that may be your igneous basement, your granite, your basalts. So there you're drilling at speeds that are maybe a 10th or even less of what we see in oil and gas. So hard rock drilling, one of those um, areas. Another thing that we don't fully understand is how thermal energy flows in the subsurface because um, flow in the subsurface, if, if there's a fluid involved, we understand how that works to a certain degree. However, when we're looking at thermal energy, uh, temperature where that thermal energy can flow, let's say through a solid medium. It can flow through the continuous fluid medium. It can flow between the two of them. So if you're drilling through a sedimentary rock, you may see one type of um, energy transfer. If you're drilling through granite, you'll see another one. Um, so understanding the thermal properties of the reservoir and how that temperature or that thermal energy moves is another critical thing we're addressing. And finally, um, again, this is just three that I'm highlighting, is looking at surface processes. So we bring this energy to the surface. How do we extract energy from it in the most efficient manner? Whether or not that is for, let's say, electricity, whether or not that is for um, energy reuse, so space heating, greenhouses, et cetera. So how do we build those surface systems and optimize them so that we can extract the optimal amount of energy from the actual, let's say, thermal fluid that we bring out, of the, out from underground? Uh, Roman, is the industry uh, and the researchers starting from close to zero, or is it some ways down the road? And from wherever you're starting, uh, can you give us an idea of how long it, you think it might take until, you know, we we're doing pilot projects, demonstration projects, and starting to talk about bringing things up to scale? Absolutely. So the exciting thing right now is there actually there are pilot projects already taking place. Uh, so there's a, a few here in Alberta, either looking at, let's say, closed loop geothermal. So this will be, let's say, the Everlight um, pilot that's by Rocky Mountain House. You, you can have uh, open loop geothermal that's in, let's say, shallow sedimentary basins. That will be, let's say, Alberta number one or deep in Saskatchewan. 
Um, so there's a lot of pilot projects already looking at this. Um, so when we come to, let's say, that technology readiness scale, we're pretty far along in that field demonstration area. However, to bring it to full economic development worldwide, we still have quite a bit to go because geothermal right now, we can think of it as being at the same stage as, let's say, solar or wind was 15 to 20 years ago. So it works. However, the economies of scale and that know-how are not quite yet there yet to really have it compete against, let's say, a natural gas power plant or even a, a wind farm right now. Well, that, that's very interesting. Any other, any other insights you've got to share with us about the work that your lab will be doing? Um, so I think the key thing that, like, what differentiates us from the way uh, people typically look at R&D in this type of a space is we don't just want to look at that engineering challenge. We also want to look at that social and that social acceptance challenge and do that from the beginning. Because one key thing that we have noticed is we have to have, like the public has to be, in, be informed, be, understand what's happening and then buy into that project in order for that project to succeed. If we get to the point where um, let's say a geothermal driller all of a sudden becomes, um, let's say a vilifier becomes that bad guy because they're poking a hole in the earth. That means that we have to a certain degree failed in engaging with that community so that they understand what's actually happening. Uh, Roman, thank you very much and good luck with your lab. Uh, it sounds like a very exciting project and, and thank you for your insights today. Well, thank you for having me today.